Hey guys, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. As you most likely have heard, or if you haven't heard, what we're about at the Beacon Fight for Life is reconnecting the Australian multicultural community. Our main goal is to reduce the number of Australians taking their own life in Australia. Currently, suicide is the leading cause of death of all Australians 15 to 44 for men. Uh, Indigenous people are three times likely to take their own life, and, and it's sad to say that 65,000 people a year in Australia attempt suicide. So the Beacon Fight for Life, we want to reduce the number of people taking their own life, and so what we're going to, we're going to play over the coming months is some footage of conversations I've had with individuals, groups, multicultural, you name it, I'll interview them, so that we can start to make inroads for people um, to stop them from taking their own life give them information and places to reach out to. So, stay tuned. Hi guys, Derek Best, uh, Beacon Fight for Life. Today again, I've got the privilege of being here with Ema. Welcome Ema. Ema's got 20 years experience in psychology, um, both uh, practicing and lecturing for ECU. Um, so thank you for joining me again, Ema. Pleasure. Today, what I thought we'd do and we, over the coming week, what we're going to do is we're going to touch on some subjects that, as you know, well, I go back a little bit, as you know, at the Beacon Fight for Life, what we're doing is we're, we're educating the communities by um, providing suicide prevention techniques for um, certain situations, I won't just say problems, but situations that arise. Yeah. And things like FIFO workers, relationships, um, youth suicide. We're going to touch on all of those in the coming weeks. But today what we want to do is address FIFO workers. Now, we're in WA, Ema, and um, you'd have to say it's a beautiful place to live. Yeah. I mean, I've travelled a lot and there's no place better to come home than WA because, you know, it's a beautiful place to live and it's a booming economy. And I think the people that we need to be at least grateful for are the FIFO workers because if it wasn't for those guys working like they do, um, we wouldn't be able to experience such a beautiful lifestyle. So thank you to you guys. But so today we're going to touch on on FIFO workers. Is Ema, is there a problem with mental health in, in FIFO, with FIFO workers? Yeah, uh, over the last few years, there's been more of a highlight on mental health issues in the FIFO community. Mm. Um, there was quite a large study done in 2018, and it surveyed 3,000 people that work in the mining industry in WA, so it's our okay. local people. Yeah. And that showed that uh, FIFO workers experience high levels of psychological distress in about 30% of people, yeah. whereas in um, tradespeople in, in the city, it's about 17%. Wow. So that's quite a big difference. Yeah. So su is suicide more common for FIFO workers than uh, the, the metro areas? Yeah, so it's hard to dig into the statistics when it comes to occupation and suicide. Yeah. But from what I could find, um, there's about, get this right, about 190 uh, FIFO workers die by suicide every year in Australia. Wow. So that's quite high. And when you compare it to workplace accidents, mm. it's about six times greater. So six times more people are dying by suicide that work in the mining industry than workplace accidents on mine sites. Why do you think that's so? Why are FIFO workers experiencing mental health problems and, and, and suiciding. Yeah, it's, it's quite a, a complicated picture. Uh, so I kind of look at three different areas, so mm. it might be useful for me to go through yes, them. Please. Um, and then I'm wondering whether it's useful to talk about how we can help people in those different areas as I we go through. I think that would be a great start. Yeah, great. So the first obvious one for me is sleep issues. Yep. So you're talking about people that are doing 12-hour shifts mm. plus travel to and from site mm. uh, and a lot of night shift workers. Mm. So we know... Um, uh, that on average somebody who works nights is only going to get between five and six hours of sleep when enough? they get to sleep yeah. it's not enough no. we look at pitching between seven and nine hours a night to maintain health it's obviously there's individual differences but yeah. to maintain a healthy um, lifestyle we're looking at between seven and nine hours wow. so you've got night shift you've got long shifts and also they're in camps, they're sleeping in rooms with a bed mm. and a tiny TV. I don't think it's normal to be sleeping, I mean, to be working through night as well. I think the body would be designed to be sleeping at night time. Exactly. And that's why uh, night shift workers in general, not just in the FIFO industry, mm. 
have on average one to two hours less per night of sleep than people that work during the day. So if someone's having sleep issues while they're working for FIFO, what do you suggest? Yeah, so if it's, it's a minor sleep issue, uh, we know that there's things um, around sleep hygiene that can really help. Mm -hmm. So things like uh, only sleeping in the bedroom, so not which is hard for FIFOs, you're not meant to have a TV in your room, you're not <laughs> supposed to have your phone in your room, all these kind of things. Mm. You've got to be realistic to the setting. So it could be for FIFO workers, we might say, turn off the TV half an hour to an hour before you're going to go to sleep so that your brain is getting that opportunity to have a bit of a rest. Mm. We know that routines can help a lot. So not just your going to bed routine but also your waking up routine so do the same things in the same order so your body starts to and your mind starts to notice it's time to go to sleep now so that would be your order of shower brushing your teeth um, maybe reading for a little while or, mm. or whatever you're gonna do mm. that you do the same thing in the same order and so your body starts getting sleepy and the same thing when you wake up to get your body to wake up mm. you make the coffee get have a shower get dressed brush it whatever order it's going to be in you do the same thing okay that can help so that's the sleep issues what about the social isolation yeah so one of the big issues for um fifa workers is obviously the social isolation they're away mm. from friends and family for long periods of time um and we know that that can cause a lot of psychological distress for um fifa workers so one of the things that I think is really important is for each individual FIFA worker to think about their needs. Yeah. So for some people, being sent photos of their family um, gatherings, being uh, looking at social media and seeing friends catching up, that can be really helpful and help them feel connected. Yeah. Whereas for other people, they feel disconnected, yeah. they feel like they're missing out, um, they feel like they're not part of that. So you've got to work out for yourself what's helpful, what's not helpful, and tell you know your support people mm. your friends family yes yeah, send me photos of mm. this or that but i don't want to know about this we'll catch up about that when i'm home so clear communication and it's also like awareness yeah. so know what works for you and it might not be the same for everybody so mm. be okay with that yeah okay. yeah and then the big one i guess is relationships yeah so one of the big issues um for fifo um workers is managing a relationship when they're at home and away for such long periods of time yeah and yeah. there are certainly relationship issues for most uh, people that work in the mining industry yeah. yeah yeah any any nuggets for that one what to do yeah so we know that communication is key right mm. so you want to be getting um getting things out getting issues out early because it's like time takes a lot longer when you're fee focused. Somebody's away for a week, two weeks, four weeks, mm. and then they're back for a week. So if you do have an issue in the relationship, you want to try and resolve it early. The other thing is setting up communication times. So planning, you need to actually plan ahead. What time is it good to have a little text conversation? Is it gonna be before shift, after shift, during shift, if there's gonna be breaks, that kind of thing. So work in with the structure, what's gonna help the person who's away and the person who's at home. Uh, one of the other things is to be really aware of uh, when you bring up issues. So as much as possible, we try to encourage people not to have an unresolved argument when their partner is flying out. Because from the moment they leave for the airport until the moment that they get home, however many days, weeks later, they're alone. Yeah. So they don't have their normal family, friends, support network. Yeah. They don't have their partner who they can resolve that face to face. Yeah. And that can cause some real distress when people are in the mines. And it being such a high risk area, yeah. we really want people to be settled and um, feeling good when so they're I, away. So I guess it's you know a bit of responsibility too for the partner that, yeah. that's, that's staying at home. Yeah. Absolutely. I think partners need to be really respectful of how hard it is for FIFA workers when they're away and mm. when they're home and to have those conversations when the person's home mm. to really try and nut it out. Yeah. And speaking about partners, what are the signs that they would be looking for if, if there was a FIFA worker experiencing some mental health challenges? Yeah. So again, it's what we say about any other life stressor. Look for changes in how the person 
is acting, how the person is thinking, so their conversations, and how the person is feeling. So if there's a change, you know your friends, you know your partner, if they're acting differently, have a chat about it, try and, try and talk to them, try to connect with them about it. Mm. So Ima, we've touched on some good content there with being sleep issues, um, social isolation, relationship issues. Now that's, that's considering everyone is in a relationship. For those people that aren't in a relationship or those people that aren't in a, a relationship where they can open up, yep. are there helplines or are there a community things that are available for those people so that they can feel, you know, get some help? Yeah, there's actually a specific charity called Mates in Mining. Okay. And their sole purpose is to support workers in the mining industry. Okay. And they actually have a free 24-hour helpline, uh, which I think would be great for our viewers to know about and to link in with. And what was it called again? It's Mates in Mining. Mates in Mining. And the number is 1300 yep. 642 triple one. Okay. Well, we'll put that up in the in the in, awesome. the, in the blog. Yeah. Um, as usual, thank you very much for helping thank us you. today and, and being here. And uh, again, Derek Vest, Beacon Fight for Life. Make sure you take the time to smile today. Thank you.